Hello, dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys, and I'm glad that you're with me again today. And let me speak to you a word from the Bible, from the Holy Word of God, and I want to share a word with you that I found in the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, in uh, the first chapter, and it's found in verses 4 through 7. <clears throat> And I want you to notice that this is a word that I've entitled that God calls us to our work. He calls us to our work. So whatever we're doing, if we're walking with God by faith in Jesus Christ, we're called to that work, according to the Bible. And knowing that we're called to the work helps us do a better job. I want to read from Jeremiah, the first chapter, and it says this, and the Lord spoke unto me, saying, The word of the Lord came to me, and said, Behold, I formed you in the belly. I knew you, and before you came forth from the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, <clears throat> I cannot speak, for I am a child. And the Lord said to me, Say not, you are a child, for you shall go to all that I send and send you, and whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. And so we, we see a word here that is a very important word, and that is a word of God saying, uh, before the word came to Jeremiah, the great prophet of God, who wrote the book of Jeremiah, and uh, the hand of God was upon him, and the Holy Spirit moved in his life, and he wrote this wonderful book of the prophets, uh, in the major prophet of the Old Testament. <clears throat> I want you to notice that he said, before, before you were born, when you were still in the mother's womb, I called you as a prophet unto the nations. This is a word against abortion. This is a word that will signify the importance of anti-abortion, of being against it. Because you see, if that mother had killed Jeremiah in her womb, or allowed her to be killed, then she would have been guilty of killing one of God's great prophets. Oh, we need to recognize, over in the book of, of uh, Job, Job says, uh, uh, you are but a, a servant to me, but but what is a servant compared to a man? He said, when you were in your mother's womb, you were just as important as I was when I was in my mother's womb. And so it is important that we see the advantage and the distinction of being opposed to abortion and to be an ally to the giving of life, giving of life. Over in the book of Luke, the first chapter, Mary, when she heard from God that she was to bring forth a son, and he shall be called Jesus, she went to her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth, who was uh, uh, also pregnant from her husband, uh, and was pregnant with John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was the, to be the forerunner of Jesus. And when, when uh, uh, she came and told Elizabeth, it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you, Mary, among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And whereof is it to me or uh, that, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the, as the voice of your salvation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. <laughs> you know, the babe, John the Baptist, leaped for joy in her womb when she heard that Mary was going to bring forth Messiah. So we see the importance of it. Let me just close with this, on this subject, just a, a, a very important, I think, word. And, and that is that this teacher, and this is the truth, it's supposed to have actually happened. The teacher was teaching a class and uh, he said, now I want you to think a moment. He said, here is, uh, this has actually happened. He said, the father were, had syphilis and the mother had tuberculosis. And they were married and they had 
four children. One of them died. The other three had terminal illnesses and did not live too long. Now she got pregnant again with uh, child number five. Then he asked the class, what would you do if you were that mother or father? And most of them said, I believe it would be time for abortion. And the teacher said, you would have killed Beethoven. <laughs> Ludwig von Beethoven, who produced such music, classical music, that we still play it after hundreds of years. He was born from that kind of a situation where the mother said and the father said, we're still going to give him life. You never know. You never know who you're aborting. And so it's important that we know this. Now I might speak to somebody today that, that you have had abortion. I want you to know something. Dear lady, let me tell you, God forgives. And He forgives that sin. And He'll forgive you and give you peace. And you will be able just to forget it ever happened and go on with your life. But you need Jesus. You need to know when he shed his blood on that cross, he was paying for your sin and for mine. And when we believe in him, we're saved forever. And so that's important to know that and to recognize that the truth is that uh, God calls us. God calls us. The Bible says that in, in Jeremiah, he said, The word of the Lord came, I called you. I called you from the womb to be, I ordained you to be a prophet. He not only calls prophets, but he calls housewives. He not only calls prophets, but he calls businessmen, salesmen, people working out in the, in the assembly line, all people working at their computers, office work. All he calls, he calls, he calls. Uh, he even calls people who uh, pick up trash and uh, for waste products. What would we do? What would we do uh, without these dear people? Our trash st stacking up in our front yard for weeks and weeks and weeks. What would we do? Oh, how important every job is in this world. And God knows it and He calls wherever there is a need for that need to be supplied. And we need to recognize it. He calls, He calls to the lost person and he says, come to me. And, he, and uh, he's, uh, Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, it says, uh, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I take no pleasure in the fact that people go away from me and go out into hell without hope. I take no pleasure in that. I would uh, that you would turn and come to me. Oh, people, 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 he cries. Why will you die? Why will you die? Come to me and believe. And I want you to believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus who paid the price and wrote it all. Now he's coming back one day and we'll be ready. We'll be waiting because we believe in him. Believe in him now, dear friend. Believe in him with all your heart. God loves you and the Lord and Savior. And so to the lost he says, Come, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I'll come in and live with him. And so he stands at the door and knock. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, come in to my heart. Say that and mean it. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and help me live for you. Amen. And he'll do it. He'll do it. Not only to those that are lost, but he calls Christians. He calls Christians. And he calls, he calls those and it tells us that we are to try to abide in that calling. In uh, 1 Corinthians 7.20 it says, Let every man abide in the same calling when he is called. And so it's good. It's good to do that. If, if God's called you to, uh, to be an a, a office worker, then do that. Do that which he's called you to do. And try not to go out and get in the assembly lines and build automobiles. But find, try to find out your calling. And do that which God's called you to do. And then you'll be doing a good job and you'll find peace and you'll overcome and you'll know the way that the Lord is leading. Now sometimes he calls people when they don't feel like they're qualified. They don't feel qualified. You remember what I read when, when he called Jeremiah? He said, Lord God, I can't speak. You want me to be a prophet? I can't even speak. I'm like a child. And the Lord said to me, Say not I'm a child, for you should go to all that I send you, and whatsoever I command you, 
you shall speak. The Lord will do it. God will do it. He'll speak. And He'll speak to you. And God will do what He's called you to do. We need to recognize that. We need to recognize it over in the and sometimes it causes people that that are, are that do not feel qualified at all to do what they can do. And over in First Corinthians in the first chapter, verse twenty six, it says, You you see your calling, brother, and how that not many wise men are after the flesh, not many mighty people, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And so that he's done this, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And so in order for us to give glory to God, we have to recognize, realize that we are nothing without him. Nothing without him. There was a day in my life, in young days, that I would never, you could never have convinced me that I'd ever be a preacher. You know, I just, I was like Jeremiah. I couldn't, I just couldn't fathom myself as being a preacher. I wasn't a good speaker. I didn't have that unction. But when the Lord saved me and God called me, I praised God I couldn't do anything else and be happy. I had to preach. I had to preach. And so it's important that we know God takes what we have and brings out of it that which is good. And it sometimes takes the bitter and it brings out the sweet. He sometimes takes the weak and he brings out the strong. Abraham Lincoln was reared in poverty, poverty, and became the president of the United States. George Washington Carver, a black man, became famous in a day of racial discrimination. Oh, there are times Franklin D. Roosevelt became president of the United States and he was paralyzed. Many people never realized that when Roosevelt was standing speaking, uh, to the multitudes of people, he was being held up with crutches on both sides and iron, uh, iron on his legs that would keep him standing for a little while while he spoke. And when he left, he'd have to go off in a wheelchair. Oh, we know when he recognized Fanny Crosby wrote so many beautiful hymns that we're still singing today in the churches. Fanny Crosby, born blind. One blind, could not see physically, but oh, what she could see spiritually. And so it is, dear friends, don't be discouraged. Take what God gives you, take that opportunity He offers you, and go at it, and take it, and make of it what God can do by trusting Him instead of you. Don't trust yourself, my dear friends. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And our trouble is we trust ourselves too much. And we need to turn that around and say, Lord God, I'm believing in you and I know you can do it. Amen. Praise God. And then we read over in the book of, of uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so it's important that you do what God wants you to do. Some of you are looking for a job. Some of you are wondering whether you are to change jobs. Make this a matter of prayer. Say, Lord God, I believe, just as you call Jeremiah from the womb to be a prophet, that you call your people today, and that we need to abide in your calling. And, oh, Lord, whatever you want me to do, lay it on my heart. Open the door for me and help me see it. And this is what I ought to do. If it's waiting on tables, I'll do it. If it's washing dishes, I'll do it. If it's digging ditches, I'll do it. If it's working in the bank, I'll do it. Whatever God calls you to do, seek the will of God. Seek the will of God. And do that which you believe that God has opened for you. And then you'll find peace. You'll find peace when you do that. Amen. Praise God. And may the Lord bless you and reveal to you your calling in this life. Amen and Amen.